We're beginning chapter 8, which is the study of quadrilaterals. In section 8.1, we're going to talk about polygons and general properties of them regarding their angles. The first thing we need to recall is what it means to be concave, which means dented in. You'll see with the check mark, with the arrow, and with the star how a side of the polygon is dented in. And remember, polygons are made up of segments, never curves. So circles, arcs, all those kinds of things are not polygons. A convex polygon, then, would be a shape that doesn't have that dented in look to it. Next, we need to recall what it means to be a regular polygon. In a regular polygon, all of the sides are congruent and all of the angles would, would be congruent. So what would a regular polygon look like? We see a few of them day to day. Some of the obvious ones are stop signs and squares and yield signs. We see those quite often. We will sometimes see the pentagon looking Si uh, shape that is regular and that often is you, if you look at the county road signs you actually see them there. Those are regular polygons. Remember all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent and the shape is always convex. Next let's talk about the interior angle sum theorem. What this talks about is the total of all of the interior angles of a convex polygon. We have a formula for this. S meaning sum, I meaning interior, so sum of the interior is equal to 180 degrees times the number of sides minus 2. So if we had a 12-sided figure, we would take 180 times 12 minus 2 or 180 times 10. That would give us the total of all of the interior angles of a convex polygon. N being the number of sides or the number of angles because the number of sides and angles are the same when we're talking about polygons. Now a question that's directly related to that is how do I find just one angle? Well, the only time we're really ever going to talk about that specifically, although we can find it often, is in regular polygons. Remember, all of the sides and all of the angles are the same in a regular polygon. What we would do is we would do the normal formula, which is sum of the interior equal to 180 times n minus 2. Then we would simply divide that by the total number of angles in our figure. From my example, if it was a 12-sided figure, we would take 180 times 12 minus 2, get that answer, which would be 1,800, and then simply divide it by 12. We also have an exterior angle sum theorem. The total of all exterior angles of any convex polygon, so this applies to all of our convex polygons, if it's a 27-sided or if it's a 3-sided convex polygon, the sum of the exterior angles will always be 360. So jumping back here, the check mark, the arrow, and the star do not have the 360 rule. They are concave polygons and do not apply to what we're learning. What we're talking about is just convex shapes. So how would I find just one angle? Again, this applies simply to regular polygons. So polygons in which all of the sides and all of the angles are the same. To find one exterior angle in a regular polygon, we take 360 and divide that by the number of sides. So if it was an eight-sided regular polygon, we would take 360 divided by eight. Let's try and do a little bit of, bit of uh, solving using this information. So we want to find the measure of the two numbered angles of the regular octagon. Key here is that it is a regular octagon. All the sides and all the angles are the same. That doesn't mean angles 1 and 2 are the same. 
all of the interior angles will be the same and all of the exterior angles will be the same. So let's start with the interior or the one that has the number 2 by it. First we need to realize that there is 8 sides in our figure. Count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the formula we use always for convex polygons, regardless of if it's regular or not, is 180 times n minus 2. Our n in this case would be 8, so 180 times n minus 2. 8 minus 2 is 6, so now we have 180 times 6, which gives us 1080. So that means all convex, 8-sided, or octagon polygons have 1080 degrees for their interior angles. Now the one we have here is specific because it has, is a regular octagon, meaning all eight of those inside angles are the same. So once we find the total, we simply divide by eight to get the sum of one angle is 135 degrees. Now let's talk about angle one, the exterior angle. To find that, Again, it's a regular octagon, so we simply say that the sum of the exteriors of all convex polygons is 360, and since it's a regular octagon, we can divide by 8 and get the sum of 45 degrees. Now, hopefully you can remember from your Geometry A course a little property here that we have this angle right here and this angle right here are a linear pair. That means those two angles should ha add up to 180 degrees. We've already decided that our interior angles are all 135, so that means this angle here is 135, and we can see by the other that this angle is 45. When we add those together, we get 180, which proves that we've done our calculations correctly. On to another example here. No picture this time. It says find the number of sides and the number of angles of a regular polygon if the measure of one interior angle is 150 degrees. So let's look at the important pieces of this question. First off, it is a regular polygon. That is extremely important to note. And we also know that one interior angle is 150 degrees. We're looking for the sides and angles. But if you remember, the sides and angles are going to be the same in our polygons. So really, we can find either one of those, and it's going to answer the same for both. So let's look in, again. It's a regular polygon, and we know one angle. It's an interior angle as well. Let's go back to our formulas. Are we going to use this one? Interior angle sum theorem. And the answer to that is yes, we are using the interior angle sum. But now we're not going to use this first formula. Do you know why? If you said it's because that gives me all of the angles, you would be correct. What we actually need to use is the second formula because that tells us one interior angle. So we're going to use the formula SI so the sum or one interior angle is equal to 180 times n minus 2 over n and we're trying to find n. So let's go back to our problem. Find the number of sides. We know what formula we're going to use. We know that our one angle is 150. What we don't know is n. We need to solve for that. If we multiply by n on both sides of our equation the ends on the right side will cancel out. These two will cancel each other. Now we have 150n equals 180n minus 2. Go ahead and distribute the 180 and th subtract the 360. Why did I subtract the 360? Simply be to keep it positive. You didn't have to. You could have simply subtracted the 180 as well. Now I'm going to move the 150 over and eventually you get to the point where you'll, you, in this problem, you would either have negative 360 equals negative 30n, or if you did it like I did, you'd get positive 360 equals positive 30n. Divide by 30, and you'll get 12. 
if you do not get a whole number in this type of a question, you've done it incorrectly. The number of sides and number of angles always must be a whole number. So we have 12 sides and 12 angles. One more question here. This question is, find the value of x. In order to do that, the first thing we need to know is how many degrees are the interior angles of this polygon going to add up to. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 angles. That means we take 180 times n, my, whoops, excuse me, times 5 minus n. Or 5 minus 2, excuse me. So we have 180 times 3, which gives me 540 degrees. So I know that all of these angles need to add up to 540 degrees. That's what we're going to do. So we take x plus 20 plus x plus 5 plus x minus 5 plus x plus 10 plus x, and that should equal 540. So we added up all of the exterior, or excuse me, all of the interior angles to be 540. When we combine our like terms there, we're going to get 5x plus 30 equals 540. Move the 30 over, and you get 5x equals 510. Divide by x, or excuse me, divide by 5, and you will get x equals 102. Now that's not our answer. We're going to have to figure out, does it want us to know the value of x, or does it want us to know the value of a specific angle? So sometimes you're going to take this 102, and that will be your answer. Some of the times you're going to need to take this 102, and maybe put it up back into that angle right there, to find out that that angle is actually 97 degrees. That's the end of today's lesson. Make sure you come to class with any questions that you may have.